Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. So in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Frozen Sonic Mighty 4K 3D printer. And I have some questions that I want answered. First of all, is it still a viable option in today's date? Especially with other similar models out there that boast an 8K resolution. So what I'll do is I'll unbox this and run it through a number of tests and then I will give my opinions at the end of the video. If that interests you, stick around. Unboxing is fairly straightforward. One of the great things about resin printers is that there is practically no assembly required. You usually just need to remove the packing material, attach the build plate, install the vat and add resin, plug it in, and you are ready to go. Included in the package are a warranty card and instruction booklet, a USB drive packaged with some sandpaper, funnel, some gloves, the power cord, a metal scraper for the build plate, and a plastic scraper for the resin vat. The power cable plugs into the back of the printer, and that is where the power switch is located as well. I prep the build plate by lightly sanding the surface with the provided sandpaper. This should help with the first layer adhesion. Next, I install and level the build plate according to the instructions. I should only have to level the build plate once, so I take my time and make sure it is done correctly. The Mighty 4K sports a 9.3 inch 4K resolution monochromatic LCD screen. This gives you a build volume of 7.9 by 4.9 by 8.7 inches, or in metric, that is 200 by 125 by 200 millimeters. The monochromatic screen allows for fast printing times, around 2 seconds per layer. In this video, I'll also be testing out Frozen 4K resin in the aqua ivory color. All my test prints will be using this resin. First impressions is that the smell isn't quite as strong as other brands I have tested in the past. This is encouraging. When testing a new printer, the first thing I like to do is print any pre-sliced files that come on the included USB. It appears this USB does have a pre-sliced file on it, so let's print it and see what comes out. Now for the big reveal. I actually already knew it was going to be a chess piece because the LCD touchscreen interface provides a small preview of the file before you hit the print button. Maybe sanding the build plate was a little premature. I find it incredibly difficult to remove the prints from the plate now, and I'm afraid I might damage a print sometime in the future. I would suggest you try printing on the unsanded plate first and then sand it if your prints won't stick to it. A quick wash and a cure, and this is what I came up with. I know my camera doesn't do it justice, but every single detail is there, and even under this extreme magnification, I do not detect any layer lines or voxel artifacts anywhere in the print. Very impressive. But that is the provided pre-sliced print. Let's see how the printer performs under normal use case situation. Setting up the printer in Chitubox was fairly simple and I decided to test out all default settings to see how well it performs without any tweaking. First, I sliced the Amerilabs benchmark. Then I sliced a gag gift that I made using Microsoft 3D Builder. Finally, I wanted to test how accurate the printer is, so I sliced a keyed model to see how well the parts will fit together after printing. And here are the results of those prints. The Amerilabs Town print came out great with no failures. Only the ultra fine details are missing, but I have struggled to get those to print even with an 8K printer. This is a torture test after all. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with the performance. Keep in mind, this benchmark is tiny. 
so this printer should be able to easily handle tiny prints like D&D miniatures and other tabletop items. The gag gift also printed out great. This model was created by merging two different models and sometimes that can cause printing problems where the two models intersect. This is probably more of a slicer issue than a printer issue, but either way, the model came out great. The Spider-Man diorama printed out mostly great. I did have a support failure on the right side of the face, but I attribute that more to a support placement and model orientation issue in the slicer than a printer failure. The rest of the model printed out great, and the two characters keyed together perfectly, and the model keyed into the FDM printed base as well. I would say dimensional reproduction is spot on for this printer. Of course, since this is a medium format printer, I wanted to see how it handled a print using as much of the available build volume as possible. I sliced this highly detailed model I found on Thingiverse. I hollowed it and added supports and drainage holes. Here's how it turned out. The supports are very satisfying to remove in large quantities like this. After a good amount of cleaning and curing, this is what I ended up with. Everything printed out great with no failures. The model is heavy, and you can see evidence of that in a couple of spots where layer separation can be seen. Keep in mind that this is all done with default settings and automatic supports. I'm sure you can adjust the settings and supports to get even better results than this, but as far as I'm concerned, this is a great jumping off point. Here are some of the things I like about the Frozen Sonic Mighty 4K ready to print right out of the box. This printer has been around a little while, so the default settings in your favorite slicer are probably as good as it gets. It's nice to be able to unbox a printer and get right to printing without having to run a bunch of tests or tweak a bunch of settings first. Dual linear bearings. The Z-axis has dual linear rails for added stability during printing. I think this is what helps the printer do such a great job right out of the box. Sturdy build plate connection. The build plate is machined in a way that it positively locks into the Z-axis arm. This leaves no room for error when removing and reinstalling the build platform. This will result in more repeatable printing results. Intuitive user interface. The menu system is very easy to understand. I had no trouble looking for menu items I needed and the buttons are nice and big so you won't miss them. This is what I don't like about the Frozen Sonic Mighty 4K. It's hard to come up with bad things to say about this printer, so I'll mention a few things that I noticed, but they are by no means a deal breaker in any way. Small screen. This screen is small, so keep this in mind if you have poor hand-eye coordination or you struggle to read small text. Loose lid fitment. The lid fits very loosely on the base of the printer, which isn't a huge deal, but I would think a better fit would help keep the resin smell down in your printing area. Resin vat hold down system. I never have been a fan of using loose thumb screws to hold down a resin vat. The thumb screws could get dropped into the vat or lost altogether. I believe it gets the job done, but other manufacturers have come up with better ways to hold down the resin vat without using loose thumb screws. Conclusion. The Sonic Mighty 4K is a solid mid-size printer, especially for the price. I even think it is the model to choose when up against a higher resolution 8K printer. Why do I think that? In my opinion, it all boils down to price versus performance. Yes, you will theoretically get higher resolution prints with an 8K printer, but we are talking about microns here. The difference is imperceptible especially if you plan on painting your prints. On top of that, the cost of consumable parts, such as the FEP film and LCD screens, is much higher on an 8K printer. So my suggestion is, save the extra money you would spend on an 8K printer and buy this 4K printer. You can use the money saved on 3D models, more resin, 
or spare parts and still get comparable results. Thank you for watching my review of the Frozen Sonic Mighty 4K 3D printer. I hope it was informative. This is a solid performing mid-range printer. It's mid-range in size and it's mid-range in price. And for the price you pay, you get a very good printer. If you are interested in learning more about the printer, or if you're interested in buying one of your own, I'll leave a link down in the description below. You can follow that link and learn more and buy it if you want. I want to thank you all for watching up to this point. Once again, my name is Tom. This is South Paul Workshop. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.